Hi, today we are going to look at uh, one of the ways to paint one of the fantastic new US Marine figures from Gung Ho. You'll see the figure stuck to a stick. I find that to be quite an easy way for me to be able to reach all of the parts of the figure with relative ease. Another way to do it is simply to, uh, to stick all of your figures down uh, onto the bases and paint them on the base. There's no reason not to do that either. That works just as well. I started uh, by spraying a black primer on this figure. Then I airbrushed on the base uniform colour, um, in this case uh, GI Green. It's certainly a time saver to spray the uniform colour on. Um, there's no reason not to brush paint it on, and that works just as well. Just takes a little bit longer to do. So once I've got the, uh, the base uniform colour down, I then paint the uh, exposed skin. So the face, the hands, um, arms if they've got their sleeves rolled up as well as, as uh, any wooden items such as the, the rifle stock and any, uh, any leather items. So, so you'll, you'll see uh, as we go through that this particular marine's got a uh, scabbard on his left hand side um, to hold his K-bar fighting knife. I paint all of those with Battlefield Brown. Once I've painted the, uh, the skin, the leather and, and the wood, I then uh, paint the base colour for the camouflage helmet cover, very distinctive with these marines. The colour I use is worn canvas um, and the reason I use this is because I'm trying to show the, the uh, helmet with the beach side out, the brown dominant side out. So it starts off with, with a very light uh, sand colour and then has some other browns added in um, which you'll see a bit further on. I then paint the web gear um, and any any canvas equipment. So um, on a lot of these uh, marines you'll see, for instance, they've got gaiters on. I'll paint that with Comrade Khaki. I'll paint the, the web gear, the harness, with Comrade Khaki. And that forms a good base for where we're going to with those items. And then, after I've done all that, I paint uh, dark gun metal uh, just on any metal items, for instance the, the action of this Marine's M1 Garand as well as the barrel, any metal items that aren't painted, I'll paint dark gun metal. The next thing I do is uh, thin down some uh, Manstein shade and then I'll, I'll liberally uh, apply this over the whole model. The reason I do this is to add a bit of shadow, a bit of depth to the colours. What you'll find when you do this is it will darken all of the colours that you painted on. That's fine, that's, that's actually something you want. Um, that's that's your, your shadow effect. We'll be cleaning that up as we go through the next steps. Once the wash is dry, I then start to, uh, to brighten portions of the model again, so to, to bring the colours back up, uh, make them more vivid. For anyone new to miniature painting, this process is known as highlighting. The reason is to show where light is naturally falling on the model and is therefore brighter than parts where um, light would be blocked. Uh, so the first thing that I like to do when I start highlighting is to highlight the flesh. Um, the reason for this is because the colours are generally quite light and if they spread a little bit onto the uniform it's okay, you'll, you'll end up painting over it. When I highlight flesh I like to, to go through two stages. The first stage is that I'll mix about a 50-50 mix of Battlefield Brown and European Skin. As you'll see, a creamy brown colour. What I do with this is I will paint it on all of the raised skin surfaces, so the nose, the forehead, cheeks, uh, chin, um, certainly fingers and hands, any, anything that's, that's really obviously in light. This colour will, will cover most of, of the original Battlefield Brown that you've laid down. There'll be little bits left over just to, to simulate some, some extra deep shadow. Once I've used this mix, um, I'll then go back and get a little bit of uh, European skin and just paint the very, the really exposed parts of the skin. So fingers, the, the nose, the sort of upper parts of the cheeks and chin. It just gives some more some more definition to the face and certainly with the level of detail on these figures on their faces it's worth spending a bit of time. 
So after I've highlighted the skin, the next thing I highlight is the uniform. This will allow me to go over any uh, any little mistakes I've made so far. And what I do here is I get the uniform colour, GI Green, and I just paint it back on over the top, leaving small bits of the, uh, the shaded colour underneath. Items of clothing join, so where the shirt sits over the trousers or shirt pockets, things like that. Another way you could do this instead of painting it on is to, to dry brush it on. This works just as well. The colour will be a little less distinct. I haven't done it here. If, uh, if you want to go a stage further, you could lighten the uniform colour a little bit again with a little bit of worn canvas, and then you just paint that on the very, very, very tips of, of places where the light is strongest, and it will give it a little bit more contrast to your figure. So, after I've finished highlighting the uniform, I then recolour the helmet. You'll see that it has darkened quite markedly. So I uh, just get out my trusty dry brush and a bit of worn canvas, so the same colour I used to paint the helmet cover originally. And I just dry brush over it so that it is mostly back to being the same colour with some parts still left in the shadow. After highlighting the base colour on the helmet cover, I then paint on the camouflage colours. So I start off with some small spots of wool brown. I generally find five to seven across the helmet, just spread across the helmet to give the impression of the, uh, the camouflage pattern that we're painting is generally enough. You don't want to really sort of cover it in there and get too pedantic. Then I will um, do a similar number of fairly small spots of battle dress brown. Um, so this is a slightly greener, darker brown than the wool brown. And again, five to seven spots is, is uh, enough. And finally, the last camouflage colour I put on uh, is some more battlefield brown in larger spots than the other two colours. I've looked at a lot of pictures of this particular camouflage pattern. What really stands out is that the darkest colour um, appears to be in bigger spots than, uh, than the other two camouflage colours. Once I've painted the camouflage on the helmet, I move on to the web gear and any other canvas. What I do with this is I get some military khaki, so a much lighter khaki colour than the comrade khaki I used initially, and I just paint that on over the top, leaving a little bit of the original colour that's been darkened by the wash, just to simulate shadow. So with the web gear and canvas painted, I then move on to uh, any leather items. So on this particular marine, You'll see that, as I mentioned before, he's got the uh, scabbard for his caber and he's got a small strap that helps secure the cover on his helmet and he's got a sling for his Garand rifle. I just go over all of those items with a little bit of tan leather. It's a lighter brown. Again, like the web guard, I try to leave um, a little bit of the underlying colour showing through on the sides, etc. Just again to, to add some shadow and shade. And there we have it, a marine painted. They're very fast to do, and you can easily knock out a couple of dozen of these in some fairly short time. Thank you for watching.